Everybody in the universe is getting beeswax wraps for Christmas. Do I need more craft supplies? No. Does that ever stop me from picking them up when they're cheap or free? Also no. Hey folks, welcome back and welcome to the episode where I lack all impulse control and bring home way more stuff than I will ever use. Probably in my entire life. But did that stop me? No, it didn't. Why you may ask? Because I can't resist free craft supplies. I have a problem. I recently stumbled upon a craft supply clean out and I walked away with so much stuff. I don't even know where to start. I figured as I was going through this, taking inventory and organizing, I'd bring you guys along so that you can see what I picked up. And it's a lot. <laughs> so this clean out was the result of decades of supply hoarding. And I'm positive that when it comes time for anyone to clean out my space, they're gonna do the same thing. And they're probably gonna ask the same questions that I asked while looking through these supplies. Who keeps this stuff? Why? Where did it come from? Why do we need to keep it for so damn long? Still didn't stop me. So without further ado, let me show you what I picked up and maybe we'll plan out a few projects as we go through it. Here we go. So let me start with some of the bigger things so that I can get those out of the way and we can really focus on the little stuff because the details are in the little things. First, ugh, I found an entire bolt of this bright calico type floral fabric. I still don't know what type of fabric it is yet. I haven't done a burn test on it, but it does feel like cotton. I'm going to make something to wear out of it, but I could probably make me and my husband and my mom and my dad and my brother and everybody's significant others shirts out of this, which I think might be really cute and probably still have stuff left over. There is so much of this, but if you guys know anything about me, you know that I cannot pass up fabric, especially if it's cotton and especially if it's free. I also found a roll of leather. This is veg tan leather, so it has not been chrome dyed with a bunch of chemicals and things. Veg tan leather, generally speaking, is more expensive than chrome tan leather. I don't work with it very often because it is expensive, but I got it for free, so why wouldn't I pick it up? I can tell that it's pretty old because it already has kind of this patina on it and it's beautiful. It has really nice like wrinkling on it and I love that kind of stuff on my leather. There are some, maybe some moisture spots on this, but generally I don't care. I also don't know what I'm gonna use this for, but I'm going to make something very cool with this. And how do you say no to free leather? You don't. Along with that, I also found this, it looks like a bag kit because the holes are pre-punched. It has the handles already cut out of it. I couldn't say no to it, so I had to pick it up. And those are some of the no duh kind of things. Of course, Katie is gonna pick those up because that's what she does. The next box I wanna show you guys, I have no idea what I'm going to do with it, but I'm going to figure it out because ugh, I got, a box full of yarn, I think. It's not thread, it's definitely yarn. But there are a few different colors in here and I haven't counted any of that out yet. I imagine this would be for maybe looms or weaving, something like that. And I haven't done any of that on this channel. So let's go ahead and add that to the list of projects to try. So let me take this stuff out, count it up and see what I have to work with. And so you guys can also see what we have to work with. Ew, mouse poop. I'm a little surprised there isn't more mouse poop though, but still. Ooh. Also going along with looms or weaving, I picked up a number of these guys. My guess 
and you guys can tell me if I'm wrong or not, is that these are almost like shuttles that you would wrap your cord around or whatever, and you would send it through a loom. That's my guess. That's not what I'm going to use these for. What I'm actually gonna use these for, hold up. This will give you a little bit of a hint. Along with these shuttles and the giant box of yarn, I found a box of bias tape in many different colors. We have dark blue, we have white, we have purple, we have light purple, we have light blue. I sure hope that this is what the rest of my wardrobe is gonna look like because I have bias tape now forever. Everything in my life is going to have bias tape on it. So finding this, I knew I was gonna need a place to maybe keep the spools that I'm working from, and that's where these guys come in. So as you can see, I've already taken a couple spools of the purple and wound it around this, I'm gonna call it a shuttle, because I think it'll be easier to pull from this than grabbing new spools every time. So just like we did with the yarn, let's take these out and count how many are in here. And again, more mouse turds. I'm throwing out these, because they're all wadded up and uh, covered in mouse turds. I think I can sacrifice it. All right, the last big, big thing that I got before we get into the small things is two honkin' honks of wax. And I'm pretty sure this is beeswax. I don't know how to test whether this is beeswax or not, but it's yellow, so I'm guessing it's beeswax. I do wanna get into making more of those beeswax wraps pretty soon. I think I can turn everything into a wrap now. Holy shit. This has got to be 10 pounds of beeswax, at least. This is insane. It's twice the size of my head. But again, how do you say no? How do you, how do you go, mm, no thanks, that's really big and you know, I'll just pay for it out of my own pocket. You don't do that. Not when you're a craft supply hoarder like I am. Everybody in the universe is getting these wax wraps for Christmas. Everybody. You're welcome. Listen to this. With the big things out of the way, let's get into the small things. And all the small things are in here. I don't think you're ready for this jelly. I don't think you are. Let's crack it open. Ta 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 ta! Don't be fooled, this is not just sewing supplies, but it is a lot of sewing supplies. So I'm gonna take everything out of this, I'm going to lay it out, and then we'll go through it pile by pile so you can truly appreciate what we have. Ta-da! First up are these Damar crystals. It looks pretty old. I'm not sure if this is inside the package or outside, but I looked these up and Damar crystals kind of reminded me of pine resin. It said you mix them with beeswax and you make stuff with that. So I'm guessing that I can melt these little crystals and use them to make beeswax wraps but I'm gonna do a little bit more research on it just to make sure that they're not poisonous. Next up, I did find some fabrics that I thought were really neat. These were just kind of tie-dyed. So what I'm gonna do with these, I'm probably gonna cut these up and put them in quilts or something like that. So we've got a couple of different colors with this and then this was more like a batik almost. There wasn't much of it, but I loved the colors together. So again, I will probably slice these up into squares and make bags. I also found a bunch of lightweight muslin. It does need to be washed a little bit. These were brand new in the package, and I bet this was used for that tie-dyeing, batiking, stuff like that. Maybe I'll make mock-ups with it, but I'll probably save it to do 
some sort of dyeing project. Before we get to all this sewing stuff, let me show you this. Okay, again, on the list of things that Katie has no idea what to do with, copper shapes, hundreds and hundreds of copper shapes. I think that's maybe an artist palette. We've got maybe some Southwest birds, more birds, a starfish. Part of the reason why I grabbed these is I think they'll actually make really cool charms to put on leather bags. I really love the contrast of the copper along with the ruggedness of the leather. Anybody want a wiener dog? We have owls with the hole already punched in it. So again, in the I have no chill now results in hundreds of copper pieces that I have no idea how I'm actually gonna use, but I can't not take them with me. Last, but certainly not least, let's go through the sewing supplies. And there are a lot. Easy ones to start with, regular canvas tape, I guess. I am a little concerned at the structural integrity of this. The outside layers seem to tear fairly easily, but I wonder if the farther I get into it, the less easy it's gonna tear. And it doesn't matter, chances are I'm just gonna use it for non-weight bearing purposes anyway, but it's nice to have this kind of stuff. And I found two rolls of this. Grandma's tin of buttons. And here in a minute, we'll go through the buttons and get them into one of my jars. Cause I've always wanted a big jar of buttons. Why not? We have random skeins of some sort of thread. I don't know, but I found it in green and I found it in a blue. So I'll take these out of the package to see if there's still any sort of use for these, but I like the colors and if it's good, maybe it'll be nice for leather things or whatever. Also in these spools of things, there were probably 20 of these laying around, but I only grabbed three. They're on metal spools, and it's just 20 yards, 60 ends, I don't know what that means, 20 over two, cotton warp natural. I'm almost positive that this stuff is not going to be good for sewing, but it may be good for weaving or looming or whatever. So I went ahead and picked this stuff up just to see what the deal is. As I was grabbing things, I saw all the sewing supplies and just started throwing them into these bins. We have 115 gold and silver eye needles. Oh, that's kind of cool. Big needles here. And then we've got finer ones along there. And I don't know about you guys, but I am finding it harder and harder to find good quality hand sewing needles. The ones at Michael's just are kind of crap. They're not thin enough. I don't feel like they're sharp enough. So this is really cool. And I know I picked up other needles as well. I don't even know what time frame we're looking at here, but I wonder if this was given away with something else. Any guesses on time? We also have these kind of uh, create your own buttons. So I think you can smush them in and make buttons with these. I've got one, two, at least three so far. We'll see if we run into any more. Snaps. I know that this stuff is old, so some of it may be useful and some of it may not be useful and that's fine. Shoe thread bobbin, 12 yards per bobbin in chestnut. Oh, oh, that's still pretty. I mean, that has quite a bit of structural integrity still. Tons of these hook and eyes in various states of complete sets. <laughs> it looks like there's lots of eyes, not as many hooks. Do we have any hooks at all? These are real small ones. I've got a lot of eyes. I don't know about hooks. This is more needles and they sold for 29 cents. These look a little bit bigger than the other ones that I had. We have embroidery ones and we have sharps and it used to be sold at Kmart. Again, any thought on kind of the time period for these? An assortment of English needles, steel and nickel plated. Another pack, these are teeny tiny little needles. I mean, they're long, but they are 
thin. Okay, I've got more of these cover button kits. Ooh, okay. So this is the refill pack, and this actually includes the kit. I was worried that maybe I wouldn't have the kit for them. Four buttons, plus four more here. I've got some more snaps, and four more there. More cover buttons, more needles, trash, and elastic. Do we think that this elastic is going to be worth anything? More eyes, more snaps. The National Life Accident Insurance. Whoa, high grade sharp three ninths, three over nine. I don't know what that means, but four needles in there. Glenover full fashion sweaters. Oh, like a sweater repair kit. 10 cents coat of arms, 12 darner. Oh, more needles. Coat of arms needles are made by the British Needle Company Limited in Redditch, England, where fine needles have been made for generations. Singer hand sewing needles. And those look almost brand spanking new. Some sort of screwdriver. A couple of these things. I know they're a thing, but I've never used these things. Oh, we have more of these little, these little needle packs. Queen Victoria gold eyed sharps. A full pack of those. More buttons, plastic rings, more snaps, two boxes of safety pins, buttons, etc. things, and thimbles. I could not find good quality thimbles anywhere, and I know there's a few of them in here. This one says delicious butternutter. Butternut? The coffee? The coffee delicious butternut. Huh. I don't care what it says. They actually fit my fingers and I needed those. Because if you buy thimbles from Michaels, they suck. They're terrible. Plenty of threads. Some of them look a little newer than others. The older the threads are, the more they disintegrate. So I'm not expecting to be able to use most of these. I was really drawn to the spools themselves. But you can tell we've got some wooden spools in here. Polybond sold for 60 cents. Belding, Corticelli sold for 50 cents. We've got these little teeny ones that are belding 100 yards. Merkinized cotton. Ew, I don't know what that thing is. The little container's pretty neat. It's got all the little arm thingies. And I don't have anything with thread arm thingies. Let's do the next container. I picked up two of these trays, kind of some poly cording. It, this is not elastic, it's just cording, but it seems like it's in pretty good condition. We have more of these bobbins. I've got a bunch of those. More needles. I will never need hand sewing needles again. More hooks and eyes, this time a few hooks, not many but a few. I think this is a sewing machine foot. I'm not sure what kind of sewing machine foot this is. I know that it would go down like that. So if you know what kind of foot this is supposed to be, put a comment down below because I don't know what it is. But it is made by Singer. The number is 161127 and looks like it was made in Great Britain. More tiny spools. Hat pin. These look pretty new. Got a couple of these. And we have more thimbles. They're not quite as substantial as the other ones. This one maybe a little bit more, but also the little organization tray. Love this. Plenty of needle minders, and it looks like a little scoring wheel. So we have some more buttons, plenty of metal bobbins this time. So I might be able to use these on my leather machine. We have some random Christmas lights, a seam ripper, foliage wire, more thread, and more hand sewing needles. Last but not least, let's do the box. Dun, 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 dun. In a surprise to no one, more thread. Check out these spools. I was fascinated by these. Let me give you a close up of this so you can read the description of it. So this says, suture, cotton, twisted, size one, 100 yards. These are spools of cotton sutures. They're not sterile, which no why you would make sutures not sterile. But when I looked these up, these were from the Vietnam era. So I picked a few of these up just because I thought the history of them was pretty neat. I have no expectation that I'm going to be able to use these for anything. 
but I'll probably try and just see what I can do with them. This was probably one of the older things I found and it says Ludlow Type A 2 ounce stitching thread made in Boston, Massachusetts. I mean, how cool is that? I'm not anticipating that the quality is going to be there anymore. I don't know, maybe, maybe it is. Okay. I can tear it, but it does take a little bit of oomph to do that. I just love this design. I think the fact that it's made in Boston is pretty cool. I was really excited about that. I mean, I was really excited about all this. So apparently it doesn't take much to make me happy like that. This guy, I'm pretty sure this is a sewing machine part. I don't know what kind of machine it goes on and I don't know where it would go. Can't get this out. And maybe that's why they're still stuck together. Mm. And then we just have this nice hodgepodge of basically brand new threads. So here's what they look like. Zerka, Suleiman, 14 grams, another cool label. And in total, I have 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 32 of this brand of cotton sewing thread. And then last but not least, as I was about to shut everything down, I saw this and I know exactly what these guys are because I use these a lot. These are John James needles. If you've never used John James needles, they are some of the better ones you can get, especially for hand sewing. And I use them for leather work all the time because they're just so dang strong. These are made in England. Let's see. So these are English beading size tens. There are supposed to be 25. Wow, these are thin. Holy crap. Wow. I don't know if you guys can really appreciate how long and thin that is. I mean, that's like, that's almost like a hair. Now I see why they're for beading because they are just so tiny. That's pretty cool. Now I'm gonna have to do beading. Great. I went through the bucket of buttons. Here's the spoils from that. There's some really cool buttons in there. And of course, a bucket of buttons is not complete without the extra things. So I managed to find a lot of the hook part of the hook and eyes that I was missing. One googly eye. And then does anybody know what these are? These are just little flat discs. They don't seem to be buttons. They don't seem to be beads. There's no holes in them. I found these rings, in plastic and metal. I did find some black buttons or black beads because they have holes in them. I'm pretty sure that these are Taylor's chalk. And then this thing was for Martha and I have no idea what it is. It was stuck with this guy, which seems like it should be a bobbin, but I'm not sure. That's it. I can't do any more. I hope you enjoyed this. I thought it was a whole lot of fun going through all of this stuff and seeing the crazy shit that people hoard in the name of crafting. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that because I don't know, I do this every once in a while. I'll probably end up making something out of this stuff. So, you know, stay tuned for that and uh, give this video a like if you like old stuff and watching other people go through other people's old stuff. I still have to organize all of this and put it away. Boo. <gasps> and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Ugh. I know this stuff had mouse turds in it. I don't even care. I'm so tired, but I also want to make something.